Hey guys, um, I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving break. So today for my podcast, I'm going to be talking about global concentration of ownership and vertical and horizontal integration. So in chapter six, we learned about ideologies from the upper class along with hegemony. These ideas connect with concepts seen in chapter three, which we are going to learn about today. So chapter three touches upon Marx's beliefs about the capitalist or the ruling class who he believed had the majority of ownership and control over means of production. Marxists believed that the ruling class used this power to further instill its ideologies on the subordinate class, which allowed the ruling class to protect its position and influence within society. In connection to what we learned about in Chapter 6, Marxist work encourages us to see the media as a means to promote a certain set of views and ideologies of the bourgeoisie. The bourgeoisie not only controls the economic activities of society, but also the media industry. This allows the upper class to regulate the ideologies the subordinate class sees within the media. Marxists believed that the, the bourgeoisie seeks to not only have its view of the world endorsed, but also its position of it through the means of media. So chapter 3 goes on to talk about the contemporary global concentration of ownership within the media industry, which reflects Marxist views of the ruling class and their power over the media. Concentration of media ownership is a process where fewer individuals and or organizations are controlling the mass media. This is due to increasing levels of consolidation of many media businesses, making the industry highly concentrated and dominated by a very small number of firms. Research has also found that corporations are ceasing to be simply national in their operations and are becoming global players in the expansion of media interests in different countries. This, glowing, this, sorry, this growing global concentration of ownership is a result of integration, the main topic of today's podcast. Integration takes two forms, vertical and horizontal. So vertical integration occurs when one company assumes control of several production or distribution steps that are involved in creating um, a single type of media product. A great example of vertical integration is um, Warner Brothers, who is owned by Time Warner, which is a huge multinational media conglomerate. So Time Warner, Time Warner owns companies at each stage of the supply chain, enabling the institution to maximize its profits and tap into a new global market. So Harry Potter is a huge movie franchise and a great example of how Warner Brothers has used vertical integration in order to maximize potential earnings from production. So the production of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 was created by Warner Brothers Pictures in, in association with Heyday Films. The movie was then distributed by Warner Brothers Distribution. The movie was later marketed through the use of several Time Warner companies. For instance, you guys all know HBO, and HBO ran um, a behind-the-scenes making of the seventh Harry Potter movie before its cinematic release. Um, CNN, another Time Warner company was able to use its position as a news station with worldwide reach wrote the seventh Harry Potter movie through its Larry King special program which interviewed actors from the movie before the red carpet premiere. So for the premiere of the movie Warner Brothers was able to use its Warner Brothers International Cinemas chain to show the film to a worldwide audience and later on HBO which I mentioned before is another Time Warner company was used to broadcast Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows premiere on television. So although vertical integration allows um, a multinational media industry such as Time Warner to limit their competition, it uh, reduces their costs and reduces their turnaround time, um, it poses a threat to independent filmmakers. These independent filmmakers cannot compete at the same level and aren't even given the chance since many of these multinational media industries are hogging up the space to do so. Since Time Warner is able to produce, distribute, market, and exhibit its products using its own integrated companies, it means that anything produced by Warner Brothers Pictures takes priority over anything produced by a different company's studio. So, in contrast, horizontal integration is when one company buys or merges with a similar company in the same industry, but that is involved in different kind of media. 
When a company grows through horizontal integration, it is usually because it is seeking to increase its size, diversity of its product or service, reduce its competition, or to gain access to new customers or a new market. A great example of horizontal integration would be Yahoo and ABC's uh, news partnership. This deal allowed both companies to increase their web presence. Um, while ABC's entertainment programming is now promoted on Yahoo's site, and Yahoo's new digital magazine uh, gets to air on ABC's top-rated Good Morning America. It is a win-win for both the companies, but is it really a win-win for us as the audience? Now when, you get, now, when you go to Yahoo's website, you can almost guarantee that the news you will see will be from ABC. Both companies now have more web presence with help from each other along with more power over the media. Uh, Time, Warner, Time Warner Brothers uh, is also a good example for horizontal integration. For example, they're not only on HBO, but they're also they also own um, New Line Cinema, Time Inc., Turner Broadcasting System, the CW Television Network, CNN, and Cartoon Network. This shows the broad range of media coverage that Time Warner Brothers has. This means that they have more power over what we as the audience see and the ide ideologies that we are exposed to. So now that you guys know a little bit more about global concentration of ownership that is due to vertical and horizontal integration, um, I'm going to give you a few questions to guide your responses. So my first question is, how do you think Marx's views of capitalism or the capitalist and ruling class relate to the concepts of vertical and horizontal integration. My second question is, um, in your own words, can you s explain why you think vertical and horizontal integration is bad for us as the audience? And the third question is, um, can you think of any other examples of vertical or horizontal integration that you have heard about within the media industry? So thanks for watching my podcast.